Bank reconciliation is a process that explains differences found when you compare the bank statement received from the bank and a company's accounting records. Cash is one of the most important assets that a company has, so a bank reconciliation is a really important control that checks the accuracy of the general ledger cash account. When you look at a bank statement, you'll notice that deposits are listed in the deposit and credit column, and checks are listed in the checks and debit column. We know that deposits increase the company's bank account, so when we apply our rules of debits and credits, we know that cash is an asset, an asset goes up with debits, and checks make the bank balance go down, and when the bank balance goes down, cash goes down with a credit. So this looks like an error when you look at the bank statement, but the bank is treating the company's bank account as a liability because the money belongs to the company, not the bank. The bank statement often has codes that explain transactions on the bank account. So we have a DM, an NSF, and an IN. Somewhere on the bank statement, you'll see a legend that explains what the codes mean. So over here, you'll see that DM stands for debit memo, NSF stands for non-sufficient funds, and IN stands for interest to earn. In order to complete a bank reconciliation, it's important to become familiar with some banking terminology. The first term is canceled checks. And canceled checks are checks that a bank has deducted from a company's bank account. Outstanding deposits or deposits in transit are deposits that are unrecorded by the bank. Outstanding checks are checks that were written by the bank but not deducted from the company's bank account. Credit memos are changes that increase the bank account. Examples of this could be collections from customers for notes receivable or accounts receivable. You could also have interest earned by the company that's put into the company bank account. Debit memos are changes that decrease the company's bank account. Examples of debit memos could be an NSF check. And an NSF check is a check that was written by a customer, but the customer didn't have the money in their account to pay for that check. Another example is printing of new checks for the company, service charges, interest charges, loan payments. When we compare the bank statement balance to our general ledger cash account, you usually find out that they're different. So if we look at the bank statement for Video Buster Company, you'll notice that the bank balance on October 31st is $2,050. When we look at our general ledger cash account for October 31st, you'll notice that the balance is $1,404.58. So when you compare them, they're not the same. Through the bank reconciliation process, we go through and find out why they're different. This slide shows us some of the differences that you may find through the bank reconciliation process. So on the bank statement, we may have checks that haven't gone through the bank account yet. Remember, those are called outstanding checks. We could have deposits in transit. We can call those outstanding deposits, remember. So outstanding deposits are deposits that were probably deposited too late to get on the bank statement. And then we can have bank errors. Items that could change the general ledger cash account could be an NSF check written by a customer, a bank service charge, interest that was earned on the company's bank account, or interest expense taken out of the company's bank account for a loan, collections made by the bank from customers, or errors made by the bookkeeper. Here we see a snapshot of the general ledger cash account. In most of the questions of the textbook, the checks and the deposits to the bank account are shown as totals in the general ledger. So our debits or deposits is shown as one total, and our checks are shown as one total. The detail for these totals are shown in separate tables called the cash receipts journal and the cash disbursements journal. So when we look for the details for the deposits or debits, we're going to look in the cash receipts journal. When we look for the details for the checks or the credits to the cash account, we're going to look in the cash disbursements journal. When we go to prepare our bank reconciliation, the first thing we have to do is find those differences. The first thing that I do to find the differences is compare the deposits in our accounting records 
and you'll find those in our cash receipts journal. We're going to compare those to the deposits on the bank statement. When a number is in both places, we're going to put a check mark by it. And when it's not in both places, so I'm going to circle it. When an item is circled, it means that that item is a difference and it has to go on their bank reconciliation. We're just going to go through the list. Start with the $240 deposit, and that deposit is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by it. The $180 deposit is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by it. The $100 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. The $150 deposit is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. When I look for the $145 deposit, it's not on the bank statement. So I'm going to circle it. So when I review the cash receipts journal, every item must have a check mark or a circle. When I look in my deposit column on my bank statement, every item must have a check mark or a circle. Now I see that I have two items here that don't have check marks by them, so I'm going to circle them. And again, the circles indicate that that is a difference, and those differences are going to go in our bank reconciliation. The second thing I'm going to do to find differences is compare the checks in the cash disbursements journal to the checks on the bank statement. When I compare the checks to the bank statement, I have to ensure that I check the check number and the amount. It's really easy to make errors in our accounting system writing down numbers incorrectly, so you have to check them both to make sure that it's accurate. So we're going to look for check number 119 for $55, and I see that it's in both places. So I'm going to put a check mark by them. Check number 120 for $200 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. Check number 121 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. Check number 122 for $70 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. Check number 123 for $25 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them both. Check number 124 for $150 is not on the bank statement, so I'm going to circle it. This is an example of an outstanding check. So it's a check that's recorded in our accounting records, but hasn't cleared the bank yet. Check number 125 for $15 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. Check number 126 for $200 is not on the bank statement, so I'm going to circle it. Again, this is an example of an outstanding check. Check number 127 for $50 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. And check number 128 for $135 is in both places, so I'm going to put a check mark by them. When we review our cash disbursements journal, you'll notice that every item has a check mark or a circle. So that's great. Remember, the circles are the differences, and those circles go on our bank reconciliation. When we have a look at the check column on our bank statement, every item has to have a check mark or a circle. So there are some items here that don't have check marks by them, so we're going to circle them. 23, 1 for 20, 1 for 10. So those, again, are differences. They're not in our accounting records, so they have to go on our bank reconciliation. Once we find all of the differences on the bank statement in our accounting records, we're ready to prepare the bank reconciliation. But the bank reconciliation form that we use looks something like this. When we prepare a bank reconciliation, it's like, it, it is like a report. So when we prepare a report, we have to have a heading. So we're going to have the name of the company first, and the name of the company is Video Buster. We're going to have the name of the report, and it's Bank Reconciliation, abbreviate Reconciliation. And then we're going to have the date, and we're preparing the reconciliation as of October 31st. When we start the bank reconciliation, what we need to do is we need to compare the bank balance and the book balance. So I'm going to put the book balance over here. And if you'll remember from the general ledger cash account, the balance of the bank statement is $1,404.58. So we're going to put that right on our bank reconciliation. The other side of this form is going to have the bank balance. We have to go over to our bank statement to determine the bank balance. When we look at our bank statement for October 31st, you'll notice that the bank statement balance is $2,050. Remember that we're reconciling the bank statement because these two numbers are different. They're different because of all of the items we circled in our accounting records and our bank statement. So we're going to start with the book balance side first. 
And in order to get the differences that we have to put on the book balance, we're going to look at all of the circles on the bank statement. I'm move this over so we can see the bank statement. So all of the circles on the bank statement go on the book side unless it's an error. So we'll start with the circles in the deposit column. And we have a credit memo for $485. Now we don't know what that $485 is for. So we would have to look inside the bank statement to check for the note that the bank put in there as to what that item is for. So I'm going to give you that information. And I'm going to tell you that it's a collection of an accounts receivable account. So I'm going to put accounts receivable from John Smith. The amount was $485. We know that this item is in the deposit column, so it's going to make our book balance go up. So we're going to leave it as a positive number. The second item that's circled in that deposit column is the interest. All right, interest, and the amount of the interest is $8.42. Then I'm going to go over to the check side on the bank statement and deal with all of the items that are circled. First one we come to is $23, and it says that it's a debit memo. We don't know what that is until, again, we go to the bank statement and we look for the piece of paper that the bank put in there to tell us what that $23 is for. So I'm going to tell you that the $23 is a charge for checks that we ordered from the bank. So checks are office supplies. I'm going to put the $23 on the bank reconciliation. The next item that's circled in the check column is $20. And you can see by the code that it's for an NSF check. So I'm just going to write NSF and $20. Now with NSF checks, remember those are checks that were written by a customer, but the customer didn't have the money in their bank account to pay for that check. So when we record an NSF check, we're going to try to collect that money from our customer. So we're going to put this into accounts receivable as well. Now, again, the bank should tell us which customer that was. So I'm going to say Jane Doe. The last item that's circled in the check column is another debit memo for $10. So I'm going to look through the bank statement, find out what that debit memo is for, and I'm going to tell you that it's for a service charge. So we're going to put that $10 down on our bank reconciliation as well. Now we finish with all of the differences, all of the circles we have on the bank statement. Before we leave the book balance side, we're going to go through all of the items to check to see if they increase or decrease the bank account. Accounts receivable, remember that was in the deposit column, so that's going to increase the bank account. Interest was another item that was in the debit column, so that's also going to increase the bank account. Office supplies, the NSF check, and the service charge were all in the check column, so those are all going to decrease the bank account. So we're going to put brackets around those guys to remember to subtract them when we calculate our new book balance. Once we finish recording all of the differences on the bank statement, we're going to go and have a look at all of the differences that we circled in our accounting records. Everything we circled on our accounting records are differences that have to go on the bank side of our bank reconciliation. We're going to start with the deposits. And there was a deposit made on October 31st for $145. We're going to put that deposit on our bank reconciliation. And when we have a deposit that's not on the bank statement, it's called an outstanding deposit. I'm going to abbreviate outstanding as OS. And we know that deposits increase the bank account. So we're going to leave that one as a positive number. So we're going to remember to add that one. When we look at the checks written out in our accounting records, we see two of them that are circled, check number 124 and 126. Both of these are outstanding checks. So I'm going to write a heading for outstanding check. And it's a good idea to keep track of the check number on our bank reconciliation as well as the amount. We have check number 124 for $150, and we have check number 126 for $200. We know that checks will decrease the bank account, so we're going to put brackets around those two numbers so we remember to subtract them when we calculate the new bank balance. So now we've taken care of all of the numbers that were circled in our accounting records. So now we're ready to calculate the new balances on our bank reconciliation. 
Now, to complete our bank reconciliation, we have to calculate the new totals for our bank balance and our book balance. So let's start with our bank balance side. We're going to take the $2,050, remember that was the balance in our bank statement, and we're going to add the items that we had recorded in our books, but we didn't have recorded on the bank statement. So we're going to take the 2050 and we're going to add the outstanding deposit of $145. We had two checks that were written in our accounting records but had not cleared the bank yet. So our outstanding checks were $150, so we'll subtract that one. We'll also subtract the $200 check. So our new bank balance should be $1,845 not the 2050 that the bank has recorded on the bank statement. We're just going to label this number as our adjusted bank balance. We're going to go over to the book balance side. Our general ledger cash account stated that we had $1,404.58 in our general ledger cash account. And we know that that wasn't correct because there were things on our bank statement that we didn't have recorded. We're going to start with the $1,404.58 and we're going to add the $485 collection from our accounts receivable. And we're also going to add the interest that we earned on our bank account. Then we have items to deduct. We purchased checks, which are office supplies. So we're going to subtract the $23. We're also going to subtract the NSF check, and we're going to subtract the service charge. So the new book balance becomes $1,845. So this, we're going to label this number, and it's adjusted book balance. Both sides of the bank reconciliation are the same, so we know we have the correct number. So you can just put double underlines under those two numbers if you like. You can also add the dollar signs to make it look really good. Although we have a bank reconciliation that balances, we're not quite finished with the bank reconciliation process. I'm just going to bring in the general ledger cash account. So you recall that according to our accounting records, it shows $1,404.58 in our general ledger account. And we know that since we've done the bank reconciliation, that's not the correct balance because we've had all of these adjustments or differences that we found when we did the bank reconciliation. So what we have to do is do some journal entries because we want to make these two numbers to be exactly the same. We want to correct the number in our general ledger cash account. So all of the adjustments that we have in our bank reconciliation have to be put into journal entries. In order to make these adjustments to our general ledger cash account, we're going to go over to our general journal. Remember, this is where we record all of our transactions, and we need to record journal entries for those adjustments only to the book side, remember. So we're going to bring a copy of our bank reconciliation and put it right on top of the general journal so we can see it there. We are only going to make journal entries for the book balance, not the bank side. The bank will take care of those ones. So we're going to start with the first one. And the first one was for $485. The date on these will also always be October 31st. First journal entry increases the bank balance. So we know that increasing the bank balance is a debit to our cash account. So I'm going to write cash first. And I'm going to put that $485 debit. And we have to credit something. Remember, every journal entry needs a debit and a credit. And we're going to credit accounts receivable because it was a collection from a customer. And that makes accounts receivable go down. So that's a credit. We have to explain our journal entry, collection from customer. The next entry is for the $8.42 of interest. Remember, we added it on our bank reconciliation, so we are going to debit the cash account because we want to make that cash account go up. So the date is October 31st. The debit is to our cash account, and the amount is for $8.42. Now, the reason that amount was put into our bank account was because we've earned interest. So our credit is going to be for interest earned. Remember, interest is a revenue account, and revenues go up with credits. So we're going to credit that $8. The explanation for the account would be earned interest. Now, I've run out of room, so I'm going to go to the next page in my general journal. And the next transaction is for office supplies. So again, the date is October 31st. Now this time, the office supplies is decreasing our bank account. When we decrease a bank account, that's our credit. So we're going to credit cash for $23. 
Now, the reason that $23 was taken out of our bank account was for office supplies. Office supplies, remember, are assets, and assets go up with debit, so office supplies is our debit. So we have a $23 in our debit column. The explanation for the transaction, purchase check, or purchase office supplies. The next adjustment is for an NSF check. It's decreasing, or we deducted it on our bank reconciliation, so we're going to credit cash for $20. Now, that $20 was for an NSF check, so we're going to put that into accounts receivable because, remember, we're going to try to collect that amount from our customer. So accounts receivable is an asset. Assets go up with debits, so we're going to put that $20 in the debit column. And the date was October 31st, and the explanation was to record NSF check. The last adjustment is for the service charge. And that is a deduction of $10. So our cash account, again, is going to be credited for $10. So cash is our credit, $10 in the credit column. Service charges is an expense. And we know expenses go up with debits, so we're going to put that $10 in the debit column as well. Some companies would call it a bank charge expense. So either one would be fine. And I ran out of room for the explanation, but I'm just going to say to record service charges. Now, we know with all journal entries, we have to post those journal entries to the general ledger. So this next slide shows us what the general ledger will look like after those adjustments are posted to the general ledger. And you'll notice the new balance in our general ledger bank account is $1,845, which is the adjusted balance we calculated on our bank reconciliation.